Today we are diving deep into the front-end system design of our star rating widget. But before we dive into the requirements, let's visualize our design. This will give us a picture as we move forward. We will start with functional requirements. Functional requirements define the expected behavior of our component. They specify what the system should do. So let's write functional requirements and add first requirement. It will be widget title. Our widget will display its title, making it clear what is being rated. Next we will show is the specific product or service under review. This will be anything from a book, movie, software, YouTube channel, etc. We will then display the number of words, giving viewers an idea of the popularity of the rating. The heart of our widget will be the average rating rounded up to one decimal point. So the next requirement is to show the average rating. Our widget will allow users to submit their ratings using stars ranging from 1 to 5. So the next point is the rating breakdown. After users submit their vote, we'll immediately provide feedback, success message and something similar to something went wrong trying again. So the next requirement is to provide feedback after watching. To make the rating process more intuitive, hovering over a star will display a tooltip. For example, hovering over the fourth star might show the text very good. Lastly, for scenarios where ratings are closed or items are archived, we'll provide a read-only mode. This will display the rating without accepting new words. The next our part is non-functional requirements. So let's write non-functional requirements and start from the first requirement. Performance. Fast load times and instant user feedback. It's what we expect from the, our component. The next one is SEO-friendly. The widget should be implemented in a way that it doesn't negatively impact the SEO of the page it's hosted on. So the next requirement is SEO-friendly. Beyond just supporting multiple languages, the widget should also adapt to different culture norms, such as right-to-left text direction. The widget should be easily testable, both manually and via automated test. Define what kinds of testing the widget should undergo, unit integration and or end-to-end -end testing. The widget should function correctly in different web browsers, such as Chrome, Firefox, Safari, etc. So the next requirement is cross-browser compatibility. The widget should adapt well to various screen sizes, especially mobile devices. So our widget should look well, starting from 320 pixels. And the last requirement is error handling. Clear error messages should be displayed for fail cases. Both the application and the component have their roles in managing logic. For clear approach, I suggest handle rendering errors within the component and manage API errors at the application level. The next step is to describe interface for our component. Which fields are optional, which ones are required. So let's add new title interface and import template for our interface. So let's add our interface iStar Rating Widget. It already has one required field, ID, a unique code for the product or service that the widget is about. It helps tell different products or service a part in the system and lean ratings to specific items. The next required field, average rating. It indicates the current average rating value for the item. The next one is total rating. It's also a required field. Total number of ratings submitted for the item. The next required field is title. The name or title of the item being rated. Then we have required field type. Specify the type or category of the product service being rated. The next field is optional field. Is tooltip enabled. Decides if tooltips should be shown on hover. Not all implementations might require tooltips. It's a feature that can be toggled based on preference. The next optional field is error render enabled. 
it determines if the widget should render error states. Some applications might handle error states outside the widget. So, by using this field, we can decide if we want to handle errors inside the component or outside. The next optional field is mass rating, the highest possible rating value. While the default might be 5 for a 5-star system, this allows for flexibility in ratings else. The next optional field is very similar to mass rating, but it will be mean rating, the lowest possible rating value, just for flexibility. Is disabled the next optional field? If true, the widget won't accept new ratings. Allow for scenarios where ratings are view only. The next field is on rating submit, which is required field. A callback function is executed when a user submits a rating. It accepts the current rating and do some actions. It depends on you. The next field is optional one, and it will be validate rating. A function to validate the user's rating input, so it will be similar to on change. If you decide to implement validate rating function, it means that you need not just validate input, but also set a new value for the input. By default, the component does it automatically. The next optional field is Area Labels. Array of Area Labels for Accessibility helps make the widget more accessible to users with disabilities, but is dependent on the implementation's accessibility requirements. It accepts the array of objects, where E is our field, for example, title, number of the star, etc., and value is our area attribute. Here we have all fields which our component will receive. The next part is assumptions. Let's discuss what we expect from the application where this component will be used. Let's dive into the assumption section and discuss what we expect from our app. Now the OR of our assumptions revolves around the app. This represents the environment in which our star rating widget will function. So let's represent our application, let's add app and some figure for it. So let's add box here and it will be our application. So it will be our top level of our application. Starting off with the language provider, we anticipate that our application will recognize the language preferred by our users. And not just the language, but also its direction, be it right to left or left to right. So let's add our first assumption, language provider. So it's not our component responsibility to recognize the language of the application. It will be responsibility of the app where our component is used. Next up is a them type. Our star widget isn't just going to look one way. We have built it to adapt to different visual themes, dark, light, and even a contrast mode. But here is the scene. We expect the them choice to come from the main app, not the widget itself. And why is that? It's because our widget is designed for this particular app. We have leveraging CSS variables that can be changed based on the chosen them. However, if in the future we decide to use the widget elsewhere, developers would need more control. They will need to adjust styles, and for that we might to have to tweak our interface. But as for now, the widget is tailored for this app alone. Let's touch our HTTP interceptors. Think of scenarios where tokens expire or servers face downtime. Who handles this? The app, not the individual components. If we embedded error handling into every single component, we would be duplicating a lot of code, and that's not efficient. So it will be app responsibility to handle all errors related to HTTP. But if something went wrong in component, I mean we received object instead of string and render is broken. Using is error render enabled, we can enable handling it inside the component. So let's add new bots for HP interceptors and add errors for it. Let's try to connect bots with title by error and let's try to change the color of the bots. 
let's choose new color, let it be pink, and it doesn't work, not this time, okay. Let's introduce another assumptions we have made, this one's about loading state. Imagine, you are waiting for content to load, and in the meantime, you see this loading animations or skeletons. Now, who is in charge of displaying them? In our design, it's the responsibility of the app, not the individual components, like our star rating widget. Our star rating widget is focused on its primary function, capturing and displaying ratings. It's designed to be efficient and do its job. To wrap it up, our widget does what it does best, and the app handles the broader user experience elements like loading indications. It's all about keeping responsibility clear and ensure a seamless user experience. This assumptions guide how our widget integrates and interacts with the broader application. Let's try to make it look a bit better, so I just change the speed of the video, so don't worry. And now it looks much better. The next part is let's discuss our API. In general situation, it's also app's responsibility to make API calls, but let's discuss which API calls we need for this widget. First up, we have our get star rating endpoint. This is where we fetch the rating details for specific product. So let's add our get endpoint, get star rating, and we will have some query params. Product ID. Using the product ID is a query parameter where we can request rating for any specific product. So let's add our query params here, product ID. The next one is a set language, let it be US. The set language header tells our server that we want the response in English. But remember, this can be changed based on user preferences. When we get a successful response, we expect to receive some data, so let's add new interface for this specific response. While we don't have any data for our component, we can skip our component at all. I mean, when we receive data for the component, only in such situation we can build our UI. Or just show some skeleton instead of the component. We added our template for interface and let's delete here our ID, because we already know the ID of the product. We expect to receive from this API all average rating, which will be string, total rating, which will be number, title, which will be string, type, which will be product type, it can be YouTube channel, film, a tune, etc. So let's add product type, which will depend on application. And the next field is value. Value will be number. And I think that we forgot to add value to our main interface. So let's add here number, but we also need to add this value to our main interface. So let's add our required field, value, which will be number. By the way, value is the most important field. I don't know how you forgot it. Because without value, we end build our component. We have title, type, average rating, total rating, but we don't have value. Okay, let's keep going. Let's back to our interface and you know what? I think that we already have our value, it just hold average rating, so it will be the same number. So let's delete our value because it's almost the same average rating. Not almost, it's the same value. So average rating is equal to our value. So everything was good, it's just my mistake, sorry. The next endpoint is set star rating. This endpoint is designed for users to submit their star ratings for particular product. It has the same query params as our get request. So the product ID is a unique identifier for each product when users want to rate a product. In the body we have value. This value reflects how many stars they give to the product, and we expect to receive new values for average rating and total ratings. So we did a lot of work, as you can see. We have API, assumptions, functional, non-functional requirements, interface, but it's not ready yet. The next topic is testing. 
We take a component driven approach to testing. Both unit and integration test are embedded directly within the component. End-to-end test are must-have. We test the entire flow of our application, right from opening the app to interaction with widgets and model windows. But it will be the application responsibility. We also can add snapshot testing. But for now, I think it will be enough for our testing. So let's write end-to-end -end flow with opening app plus widget plus model window. So we need to test all flow. Next, we prioritize accessibility, ensuring everyone, regardless of ability, can use our app. From using YAM and RAM units for zooming, incorporating semantic text for clarity, to area attributes for screen readers. So let's add semantic text requirement, and the next one, area attributes for screen readers. Also, we can add some roles for screen readers, but I think area attributes for now will be enough. The next requirement is supporting different themes for accessibility. For example, some users have difficulty perceiving text or images that don't contrast strongly with their backgrounds. A high contrast them can help my content more readable for these users. The next one is mobile-friendly requirement. It means our widget should be available on mobile devices as well as on desktops. Also, we need to have language options and able support. I think that from accessibility perspective will be enough. Lastly, optimization. Speed and efficiency matter. So let's add new title. It will be optimization. And let's add some requirements. So let's change title to optimization. And let's add the first requirement. Which will be Ash. We leverage Ashen techniques to store common data ensuring VE responses. So let's write save common data for VE responses. The next one is minification. It means that we need to minify it. HTML, CSS, JavaScript and also our images if we have. Using optimistic approach is also one of the our optimization. So let's add implement optimistic approach. The next requirement will be focused on using red image format. So it means that if we can use WebP format, let's do it. But if we can use HTML emoji instead of images, I think HTML emoji will be better format. And choice for our star widget component. And the last optimization will be prevent re-renders. It will be optional requirement. It means that we need to use use memo, use all by if we use React. If we use another framework or libraries, it will be different approach. It will depend on the framework. That's all for today's video. I hope you like it. Don't forget to hit the like button. See you next time. Bye.